Well, the consensus after today's oral argument of the Supreme Court over Arizona's immigration law, SB 1070, was that the majority of the justices seem to be favoring Arizona's arguments over the Justice Department's. But the arguments here, like I said, focus on the federal versus state power debate, and they had little to do with the possibility of racial profiling. In fact, Chief Justice Roberts told Solicitor Verrilli that no part of your argument has to do with racial or ethnic profiling. We did, however, hear some comparisons made by Justice Scalia between undocumented immigrants and bank robbers, also asking Verrilli if he was, quote, objecting to harassing the people who have no business being here. But the question is, what about the people that are supposed to be here that just look a certain way? Is it just about the specific legal arguments here, or do Americans maybe care less about profiling these days? Here to discuss with me is Gary Johnson, former two-term governor of New Mexico and current libertarian presidential candidate. Governor, nice to have you back on the show. Great Thanks to be for being on. here thank tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, I mean, what's your take of everything that was going on today? Because in the past, you have been critical of Arizona's immigration law. Well, I'm not critical of the fact that Arizona should be making these decisions, but I am critical of the decision. I think it is going to lead to r racial profiling, that it does. And I will tell you, uh, having a hotel interests in Tempe, Arizona, that ever since this law has been enacted, uh, there's been less convention activity in uh, Tempe. And this is not good. This is just, this is just crazy. I, th I think we should make it as easy as possible for somebody that wants to come into this country and work to get a work visa. Not a green card, not citizenship, but a work visa that would entail a background check and a social security card uh, that applicable taxes would get paid. I'm advocating the fair tax. Uh, if we implement the fair tax, taxes won't be an issue at all. Whether you're illegal, legal, visitor, U.S. citizen, you're not going to be able to avoid paying the one and only federal tax, a consumption tax. Do you, you, do you think people uh, can be illegal? Do you think that's a term that's okay to use? By illegal, just n not documented. I think that uh, any immigrant entering the United States will stand in line to get a work visa if the line is moving. And the issue right now is you cannot get a work visa and come into the country and work. So you know that if you get across the border, even illegally crossing, that you can still get a job. No, I don't like the term illegal. Uh, when it comes to workers from Mexico, we're getting the absolute cream of the crop when it comes to these workers. They're an asset, uh, not a liability. What about the fact, uh, you know, some of these statistics that I just went through from the Pew Hispanic Center, the fact that so many uh, Mexican migrants are now going the opposite direction? The economy. I mean, uh, the fact that, uh, that our economy is not doing so well, I mean, this is a direct reflection on immigration. Uh, I just think the more immigrants that we have, the better the economy is doing. And I, I think they actually work hand in hand with one another. Uh, I think uh, I've read uh, recent studies where there have been a loss of U.S. jobs, U.S. citizens losing their jobs, uh, because immigrants aren't, uh, aren't uh, connecting the links, if you will, in our economy. Well, and one of the things that we've seen, too, is in certain states like Alabama or Georgia, where they also passed restrictive immigration legislation, uh, a lot of the migrant workers ended up leaving, right? And then there was nobody, uh, there were certain farms where there was nobody to pick certain fruit. Just like, and just like you and I industries. would leave if we, weren't, uh, if we weren't wanted. But, you know, but so clearly, in your view, you think the states should have the ability to, uh, to work on immigration on their own. That this shouldn't be something that the federal government and only the federal government can handle. But then you have Arizona, you have eight other states that have passed immigration legislation that's very similar to this, that raises these issues uh, while they ban racial profiling, technically, that it might actually happen. So, I mean, does that, does that raise a concern for you? Maybe the federal government could put an all-across ban on things like this? Absolutely. I have friends that live uh, on the border in Arizona that have soaped on their windows. Uh, I'm an American citizen and have their papers, and yet they're, and the reason is they're Hispanic. They're not white. Uh, look, uh, but it's their state legislatures that have decided uh, to pass this kind of law. I, I, I would not have passed the law. I would have vetoed the legislation. I think it is going to lead to racial profiling. I think it's a bad thing that states take this on. Look, and uh, I think building a fence is just a crazy notion. Uh, and if we want, <laughs> if uh, politicians in Washington want to decide to build a fence, why don't we just build a pilot fence around Washington D.C. and see how well that works? Think that'll uh, keep you in or out of work if you want to get in or out of work? I don't think so. Now, a lot of people that live uh, right in Virginia, Maryland, too, that come in to work here in, in the city. But you actually had some choice words for New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg this week when you were in New York City. 
Uh, he in the past also had been critical of Arizona's law because he was concerned that it might lead to racial profiling. And then you took issue with the stop and frisk policies in New York. Tell us stop more about that. Stop and frisk policies in New York. 700,000 New Yorkers have been stopped uh, in the last year and, uh, and basically searched. And we're not talking about getting on an airplane here. We're talking about on the streets of New York. And Mayor Bloomberg had uh, criticism for Arizona's law, said it was going to lead to ro racial profiling. Well, I got to tell you, in New York, uh, I think racial profiling is going on right now with regard to the whole stop and frisk. Isn't this why we fought wars when it comes to protecting our civil liberties? Well, this is civil liberties out the window. But so what's going on? Do we care less because we have immigration laws being passed like this? We have law enforcement uh, not only practicing stop and frisk in New York City, you also have this investigation from the AP that revealed that the NYPD was launching massive surveillance and monitoring the entire Muslim community in the Northeast solely for the fact that they were Muslim. I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I, I just think so much of it is uh, fear-driven that it's uh, politicians uh, pointing out that the root of all evil are illegal immigrants, uh, terrorists, um, bad health care, drug users, elect me and I'll save you from all these ills. And really, to me, that's where it all stems from. Do you have a position on, uh, on CISPA, on the Cyber Intelligence Act right now that, that's trying to make its way through? The White House actually said today that they would veto it if it stands as is. Well, good. Uh, there's nothing that the government needs to fix when it comes to the Internet. And uh, there's always unintended consequence of anything, uh, everything that the government does. And in this case, uh, it would be shutting down, arguably, uh, the real open source for information that we all have, every single one of us. Well, and here they want to take advantage of that open source and then just share all of your private information with government agencies and not exactly tell you what it is that they're going to do with them. The whole notion of civil liberties, it's getting worse in this country. It's not getting better. And I would argue that's why we fought wars, is to protect civil liberties. Uh, my dad didn't go over to Normandy to to uh, land uh, uh, behind the lines before D-Day for Social Security, Medicaid, or Medicare. He was there to protect us from uh, the, in the, the incursion on our civil liberties. Liberty, freedom, that's what this country has always stood for, and uh, there needs to be a refocus but on just how important it is. Unfortunately, uh, what's going to happen, I mean, it makes sense, right? On one hand, in this upcoming election, the economy is going to be the number one issue. I think it's unfortunate civil liberties aren't going to be as big of an issue. But so then I have to ask you, right, because you um, clearly one of the things you boast about are the balanced budgets that you've passed in the past. But if we look at what's going on in the UK right now, we just found out that they have actually entered a second recession since the crash in 2008. And uh, so much of this, a lot of people are pointing to their austerity policies that have passed, that have been very aggressive. Oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they were taking their medicine. I think, I think the United States has a real opportunity here. I mean, let's but balance. But their medicine, medicine isn't working. It's making them more sick, at least in terms well, of the economy. Well, or, or uh, sick to, to uh, allow the patient to survive long term. Uh, I, I would argue that uh, continuing to prop up the patient, in, in this case, continuing to spend, borrow and spend 43 cents out of every dollar that we're currently spending is completely unsustainable and that we're going to kill the patient. The United States is going to cease to be to exist as, as a government if we don't fix this. So I would argue there's an opportunity here for the for the United States to lead. And if, if you think there's not going to be a contraction, well, better a contraction than a collapse. But what if there would be a collapse because of more of this short term pain, right? Because for those people to advocate for more government spending right now, well, uh, and, uh, and I, more I, quantitative easing or something, they would say that in the short term, this is going to get us back to where we need to go. Deficits are a problem of the future that you can deal with later. Uh, I would argue just the opposite, that, uh, that we need to take on these problems. We need to take them on now. Uh, what you're talking about is a collapse. You know, if a collapse occurs, it's because of what has happened over the last several decades. It's not what happens now. The only thing that we can do to prevent this is to slash spending, something that nobody wants to take on, and yet it has to be taken on. It has to be taken on when it comes to the entitlements. Yeah. Uh, Medicaid, but try, Medicare, Try being a politician and telling, uh, you know, and telling the American public that when they're already upset. That's and what if I'm, we end up going I'm, into this second recession. That's what I'm actually attempting recession here to try and be the, the libertarian does. nominee for president. The notion that people care about two things, I think. They care about civil liberties and they care about doing that in the context of a balanced checkbook. I think, but they I, care about now, right? Everybody they, needs to be do. able to go to work, to feed their family, get that paycheck. Now, uh, I think probably 
more immediately than they do in the, well, in the future. And some, and some leadership to actually point out that if we don't deal with these problems now, uh, we're going to find ourselves without a country. We're going to find ourselves with a dollar that doesn't buy anything at all. All right, I have to wrap it up. Uh, Governor, thanks so much for joining thanks. us tonight. And uh, I'm sure we'll, you'll hear, or people attending the Libertarian Convention next week, you're going to hear a lot more of that philosophy. Thanks. Thank you.